Today, I'm going to talk about deep learning, a very popular word these days. Uh, you probably have already heard about some other buzzwords like machine learning, artificial intelligence, etc. Anyone still confused about the definitions of those terms and the relationship of those terms? None or a few? <laughs> All right, let's just figure out. Uh, so among the three terms, we have uh, AI, artificial intelligence, which is the biggest domain that covers pretty much everything around enabling computers to mimic human behavior, so recreation of human thoughts. And we have machine learning, which is actually a subset of AI that aims at making machines to understand underlying pattern of the existing data so that it can apply what it has learned to some new observations. And then deep learning is actually a special subset of machine learning algorithms that using artificial neural networks of very complex and deep architecture. So probably some of you only heard about artificial neural network or deep learning since uh, Google's AlphaGo is human, right? Um, but if you know deep learning, you must know the well-known CNN, convolutional neural networks. But Sorry, I'm not going to talk about CNN at all today, uh, but another variant of a deep neural network, which is called graph neural network. So the highlight of such approach is actually, it can be used to model data that are very complex relationship and hierarchy between data objects. So um, today I'm going to start from uh, some basics about uh, data representation and then introduce to you a powerful data representation called graph of graphs, um, and then talk about the learning algorithms of uh, the graph neural network, which is used to encode graph of graphs, and followed by some uh, real world examples of using graph of graphs and the uh, graph neural networks. So some of you probably feel a little bit scary because I mentioned learning algorithms, but I will make sure there is no formulas in my slides. All right, so let's have a quick look at uh, the data representations. So no matter what kind of problem you are trying to solve, um, say text documents classification, uh, user clustering, speech recognition, it will involve one or more data types. And in order to use artificial neural networks to encode such data, we have to transform the data into a machine-readable representation. So the most simplest one, uh, the simplest one is the plane vector. So we have uh, a set of numbers. But um, in such representation, the, the context, the relationship among those individual numbers are actually completely ignored. So we have sequences introduced for modeling um, sequential data, time series of data. So for example, like we can use it to describe user events um, for sensor data and also speech. And then we have a tree representations, uh, usually used to describe uh, structured data, say structured documents, for example, like XML documents, because we have this XML tree, um, or any other data objects that are featuring, say, hierarchical relationship among different data objects. And then you may notice that both sequences and trees actually special case of graphs, where in a general graph, uh, it actually contains a set of nodes that connected via any types of links. So the links could be directed, could be undirected, could be um, bidirected, or there will be uh, self loops or um, uh, yeah, self connections. But there could be some learning problems of which the node in the graph can be described by another graph. So it's of more complicated relationship among those nodes. And then this will result in a data representation, a graph structure that have a node in the graph described by another graph or a tree. And theoretically, such structure can be extended uh, to be to with uh, like infinite depth. So it could be like a Graph of graph of graph of graph. If I keep saying that, that will probably will reach the end of the day. Uh, so that's just theoretically. Uh, in fact, we need to optimize the representation uh, to make sure that we only include as deep context as we need. All right. 
So one more thing is uh, why we need the graph representation. So we usually use graph representation to describe um, more complicated uh, relationship among data objects. So for example, like the data uh, for social network, data on Facebook, Twitter, or if, like paths in the city, et cetera. So next, I will give you some examples of the real world uh, graph of graphs. So the first one is web spam detection. So in such example, we have a collection of web pages. So how are we going to represent such domain? Um, web pages are actually connected by hyperlinks. So first we can define a graph, describe the web domain, where the nodes in such graph are documents and the links are actually hyperlinks. And each node in such graph can be described by, say, a feature vector that contains some content-based or link-based information to describe such page. And then we know that in such graph, some pages are labeled as normal pages, and some pages are labeled as uh, spam pages, and some pages are actually unlabeled. Then we can use machine learning approach to, rep to encode such representation and then predict the result for those unlabeled pages. And then similarly, for the web document categorization problem, we can define the web page, we can define the web graph too at the beginning. So the web graph will have nodes uh, represent the documents and the links represent the link, uh, have a links between the pages. But uh, in addition to the feature vector um, described that particular node in the web graph, we can attach another graph structure to further describe that document. So for example, like uh, for XML documents, we can use a tree representation to describe that particular document. So a node in that tree can be probably an, uh, an element in the XML document, say a block of text. And if we extend that even further, the block of text within a particular pair of XML text can be described with another text graph, which uh, can model the word tokens or associations among those tokens. So here we have this three level graph of graphs, which is a web graph of document graphs of text graphs. So such graph of graph representation actually encapsulates the content of the page and also the contextual information at different level in such text document domain. All right, so how about some other data type uh, rather than text documents? Um, Imagine that we're trying to classify YouTube videos into predefined categories based on the human action detected in the video. So how could we approach to uh, represent such domain? Uh, first, we need to understand what actually forms a video. So video is actually a time series of images. And then for each image, what we can do is to extract some features to describe that image. And uh, for example, like some interest points. And interest points are, are usually associated uh, with uh, one or more, the, the significant change of one or more image properties or the significant change among adjacent images. And then based on those interest points, we can build some uh, common uh, visual descriptors to describe that particular image. And you may see that um, the interest point may look a bit independent on this image, but actually there is context among those interest points. So what we can do is to connect those interest points to form a graph to retain such spatial context around those interest points. So let's have a look what's the representation now. This is actually a sequence of graphs, which is a two level graph of graphs, where the level one graph is a sequence, represents the time series of images. And the second level graph uh, provides a structure to describe individual image frames. So now we have several graph of graphs. But how could we use this graph of graph? Um, so the regular artificial neural network can only handle uh, plain vectors as inputs. This is um, the common sense, right? Um, and we have recursive neural networks and recurrent neural networks can be used to uh, handle, say, sequences or trees. However, if the dependency between the nodes in the representation is more complicated, 
say, for example, it can form cycles, or self connections, then recursive networks can't really deal with this case. And not mention if the representation is graph of graphs. So how could we encode graph of graph structure using neural networks? Introducing um, graph neural network. So <clears throat> I will start from a very basic architecture of a graph neural network, which is used to encode a very special graph of graphs, the one level graph of graphs, which is actually graph. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, and um, so the architecture of such basic um, network uh, has certain similarities to the recursive multi-layer perceptual network. I think everyone heard about it, right? <laughs> Um, well, anyway, uh, in that, both feature four main layers. So the input layer, the hidden layer, um, the, the state layer, and the output layer. So you may notice that in addition to those common three layers, input, hidden, and output, we have a special layer here. It's called state. Uh, I will talk about uh, the state layer a bit more later. So the graph is actually processed by uh, the graph neural network node by node in a random order. And, and for a node in a graph, we actually, uh, the output from the network for a node in the graph depends on the state outputs for all its neighboring nodes. So here, we, what we did is to compute a sum of the state vectors of all its neighboring nodes for a node, and then concatenate to its own, um, say, input label vectors. So you may notice that the most critical part in this process is to ensure the sum of states can reach a very stable point. And this is achieved through uh, an iterative procedure. So we repeat the feed-forward session several times until the changes to the state vectors converge. And uh, the backward phase is the similar, so we need to like uh, iterate that until we reach the sta stable point. So in the case that we want to process a graph of graphs with two or more levels, we introduced uh, some more network components. So here it, we have this encoding network uh, and the output network. So the encoding network is actually for processing the, the graphs that used to describe uh, a node in the upper level graph. And an output network will be used to um, encode the top level graph. So the encoding network actually can be unfolded according to the structure of the graph of graphs. So the depth of the graph of graphs and also the size of the graph at each level in the graph of graphs and also the, the network structure. Um, and the feed forward and a back propagation, a back propagation actually is through um, also the, the structure of the graph of graphs, uh, the size of the graph at each level, and also the network structure. So you probably can imagine how deep it will be if we really train such network. So a bit more information about the learning process. So, for example, here we have this uh, two-level graph of graphs. So, uh, we will start from feeding the information uh, of the node at the deepest level into the encoding network and pass through the hidden uh, arriving state layer, compute the state output, and then we repeat that process until we can produce very stable states for all the nodes in the graph. And at that point, we can produce the final outputs for a particular graph. And the such output from the encoding network will be used as the input label when we're processing the upper level graph. And the process in the encoding, in the output network is not very different. So it's the same. We repeat the feed forwarding process multiple times until we reach the stable points. Uh, but the only difference is that at the output layer here, we're trying to generate the final output for the whole graph of graphs. And at the output layer, we can um, compute the error between the actual output and also the expected output. So to sum up this process, uh, oh, sorry, the iterative backpropagation uh, is after the feed forward session. 
So the error has been computed and it will be propagated through, from the output network to the encoding network. Um, and you will see the number of iterations that a back propagation will go through is actually the same as the number of iterations that um, the feed for word session required before to reach the stable point. All right, so the learning of graph of graphs with a graph neural network is actually with a very specific order. So the information will be fed into the network uh, from the deepest level um, and until the top level. And the, um, the, t uh, the back propagation process is actually in the reverse order. So it's propagate error from the topmost level until we reach the deepest level. And the network parameters uh, will be updated according to the gradients that we computed and accumulated. It seems like a bit boring, right? <laughs> but, so what are the applications uh, of using graph neural network and uh, graph of graphs? I hope this has already provided you uh, some basic ideas about um, such learning algorithm. Um, and then the applications of graph neural networks and graph of graphs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have this web spam detection thing. Um, so for this task, we actually created a one level graph of graphs um, for the properties of in individual pages and the relationship among pages. So in such web graph, we have nodes represents the documents and the links represents the hyperlinks. And each node is described by uh, a feature vector that contains some content-based and linked-based information. So content-based information such as number of words in the document, uh, the average length of um, the word, and uh, also the, uh, the fraction of the anchor text, fraction of the visible text, et cetera. And the link-based feature like um, the in-degree, out-degree of the documents, page rank value, trust rank value, et cetera. Um, and our GNN method actually has shown some advanced, like, advantage compared to other approaches that using only those plain vector, feature vectors as the inputs. So it was able to generate some competitive generalization performance on uh, web spam detection in some benchmark data sets. And for this um, task that um, human action recognition task, we try to recognize the human action in unconstrained videos. We have built this sequence of graphs. So we have this two level graph of graphs. And in the second level, what we did is to extract interest point and then based on those interest points, uh, we built uh, some common, common used um, visual descriptors such as histogram of gradient, histogram of uh, optical flow, uh, motion boundary histogram, etc to describe uh, the interest point. And we have adopted uh, a Delaunay triangulation technique to um, describe the relationship between those uh, interest points on one frame. And um, the approach, yeah, sorry. And uh, the graph of neural network and the graph of graphs, um, the, uh, the approach of this, the combination of these two actually helped us achieve some good results uh, in some benchmark video data sets, but I think the more significant contribution from it is actually this deep learning framework for this particular problem. Because you will see it's very flexible to replace the, say, the Delaunay triangulation graph with some other contextual re representations. Or you can use even more powerful visual descriptors to describe the coordinates on the frame. Or even you can extend the graph of graphs with uh, more levels when necessary. All right, so a few words at the end. Um, so the approach of uh, graph of graphs and uh, graph neural networks actually is providing a framework for modeling data that are featuring a very complex relationship and hierarchy without abstracting the intrinsic connections among them. And the power of the graph neural network algorithm is that it can encode all the elements in the graph of graphs as a whole. Uh, however, according to my experience, um, I found that the main problem uh, of the graph neural network is actually 
it's actually the difficulty for us to find out a very good network architecture for a particular data domain. Um, so we did experiment a lot and try to f identify a good model for uh, different um, problems. Say how many layers required for this problem, how many neurons in each layer. I think that's probably a common problem, but um, I believe this could be some really potential future work that can empower GNN even further. And also, the computational cost of uh, graph of graphs and the GNN can be very high, especially you can um, increase as the comp complexity of the graph of graphs and the depth of the graph neural network grows. But uh, without the, um, the proper infrastructure or the scalable implementation, it will be very difficult to put it into production. Uh, however, I think deep learning has been behind many advances in AI, um, which I think in the f near future, we should be able to see more uh, deep learning, real world deep learning applications uh, with the advanced hardware and advanced uh, development framework. Thank you. Thank you.